Hello family, we thank God for today. We bless him for his faithfulness. Today I continue to share on the laws of religious festivals that God had given to the people of Israel. But for today's message, my focus will be on the Feast of Trumpets, which is also known as Rosh Hashanah in Hebrew. I am reading Leviticus chapter 23 from verse 23 to 25. It says again, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Say to the children of Israel, on the first day of the seventh month, almost October, you shall observe a day of solemn sabbatical rest, a memorial day announced by the blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work on that day, but you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. In a bit of study that I did, I came to realize that it is believed that that symbolic act of blowing the trumpets is actually replicating in some form what God or the people of Israel did in Exodus chapter 19, where they had blown the trumpet and so on before God presented the people before God. And we know that in that subsequent verses, we're told that when the presence of God came up on the mountain, there was smokes and, and all manner of things that had happened for them to know that truly Almighty God had descended to meet with them. It is also believed, therefore, that the um, celebration of this feast is actually a way for the people of Israel to remember that there are people who are under a covenant, that God made a covenant relationship with them, and that relationship involves them living a holy and righteous life. And so it is also believed that it is a call for them to repent because one of the religious festivals God said to them or um, they were to, to basically follow or a special sacrifice that they needed to really celebrate was the Day of Atonement. And this feast happens 10 days before the Day of Atonement, which in essence means that The blowing of the trumpet is a call for them to also evaluate their lives and to repent from any sin that they may have committed because sin obviously hinders or interferes with that covenant relationship or in other words, in them adhering to the terms of the covenant relationship. So Rosh Hashanah is a very symbolic act reminding them that God has also made them several promises, which includes them basically receiving restoration from whatever sin they've committed and so on, that God in his faithfulness, once they acknowledge their sin, God would meet them and cleanse them and basically make them worthy of carrying on in that covenant relationship. What do we learn from this for ourselves? That once again, that's similar to what I shared yesterday, there comes times when we need to take some time to really consider all that God has done for us, given his only begotten son, so that he would die on the cross to pay for the penalty of your sin and my sin. That there are times when we need to remember that we are a people who are also under covenant relationship by virtue of the fact that if you are a believer, the Bible says that in Jesus' death, by the shedding of his blood, when we accepted Christ, we entered into a covenant and Jesus is the mediator of that new covenant. And so equally, from time to time, We need to also reevaluate our walk with the Lord, remind ourselves that we're people under covenant and to also really ask God to forgive us 
where we know that maybe we've not done things that we should do and to really reevaluate our lives and to ask God to give us the grace to continually walk in the path of holiness and righteousness that he wants us to walk in. And another thing that I think is important is for us to always remind ourselves and to set these times apart where we remind ourselves on just how great and awesome God is. Because he demonstrated his greatness and his awesome power to the people of Israel. Not only through the different things he did by bringing the plagues upon the Egyptians. Causing them to escape Egypt by his mighty power. Parting the Red Sea and all the different things he did. But when God ascended on that mountain. After the trumpets had been blown. And Moses presented the people before God. The Bible says that the people were in awe of what they saw, which was a physical manifestation for them and for there to be no doubt whatsoever that God was amongst them and that he had appeared in a way that they could at least relate to, that God's presence was with them. And so let us find time to really sometimes just celebrate the goodness of God his power, his awesome deeds, and to honor him. Because sometimes when we go through the motions and, you know, we're doing life, it can, we can easily forget this. Even though we might be going to church and, and be participating in church gathering, sometimes it gets to a point where if you're not careful, you just forget that, you know, in all of that, that we're serving a God who is mighty, who is powerful. That when he really shows himself, people may not be able to stand on their feet. And as I shared in a previous podcast, that God's presence, his manifest presence, is such that it can even kill. And so we know that even in, in that journey, there were times when God would say to Moses, do not let the people even come as far as this particular boundary, because if they do, they will die. Because there was no way they could see him in that manifest glory or, or presence and live. So let us make an effort from time to time to ponder on just how great and awesome our God is and to remind other people of the same, particularly if maybe we've got children who are young children or if there are people who are new in the faith. Let us let them know that the God that we serve is not the God like other religions have. He is God, G-O-D. Unfortunately, the English language sometimes limit, has limitations in that anybody can call their idol a God. But we thank God that because he knew that, he distinguished himself and he said to the people that he is Yahweh, Adonai. What a glorious God we serve. And we thank him that he's enabled us to even get to know who he is that we, unlike some other people, acknowledge that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're now going to go over our memory verse in Psalm 107, verse 1. It says, All give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his compassion and loving kindness endure forever. We're personalizing it by saying, I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his compassion and loving kindness endure forever. The Lord bless you, and I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.